good morning. You find us here in the woods at Howell Bushcraft and uh, we're going to shoot a follow up video to the top setting up a video that we posted last year. Um, had a few, few people contact us about how to pack it away so I thought I'd show you how we do that really quick in the actual weather that you might be doing it in. Um, so if you'd like to follow me and we'll look at the corners first. So you've got the tarp set up on a simple ridge line. Um, I've already packed away my washing line from underneath and I've got the bag, the stuff sack that I keep the tarp in, just clipped to the line there, uh, ready to go when I need it. So the first thing I want to do is just tidy the, um, tidy the guy lines away. And we've got these to some disposable pegs today. So these are literally just uh, twigs off the ground that we put a quick point on and, and uh, knocked in. So they're not pegs to retain, it's literally just forest fodder. So we can lose those. So we first undo the slippery guy line hitch, which is um, one of the most popular articles on our blog actually. So if you'd like to know how to tie that quick tie knot out to the corners, that's already on the blog. Uh, but to pack it away then, we come up to the tarp. And this is important, so we start at the tarp, not down at the bottom. And what I like to do is actually take the tab of the tarp into this knot so that I'm securing it to the fabric of the tarp and not just tying a loose dangly knot on the end. Um, it means that in really harsh conditions you're not going to lose the knot to the wind, it's not going to flap it alone or anything like that. So I hold that in between my thumb and I, what we're going to do is start to wrap in a figure of eight pattern around my hand like this. So the, um, the system that we're tying here is uh, often referred to as the butterfly hank. So we're hanking the string up, so tidying it up, uh, and it sort of looks a bit like a butterfly when you're done because of this figure of eight. So we're literally just going around my finger, crossing over, and around my thumb. Um, I tend to do this quite lightly, although neat. If you really tighten this down, you basically pull your finger and thumb together and you can't get it off. So a bit of slack. And then once I've got about an, a sort of arm's breadth of, of string left, uh, we can start to wrap. Maybe one more, it wouldn't hurt. hurt. Then this is the technical bit, so we'll get you zoomed in for this. Um, so still holding on to the top, we're going to tuck our live in now between my hand and the wraps. So it goes down that hole there. And I do that once, twice, three times. And then this is the bit that if you want to go to pro level, um, we're going to wrap those wraps towards my thumb. So I'm actually coming back up towards my thumb as I wrap those things on. So if I do one more to show you that very clearly, as this comes over, it's going on this side next to my thumb. The reason being that once we've done three, out of there for you, once we've done three, I can pinch that whole thing, take my fingers and thumb out, and now I can hold the tarp firmly. And now, as I start to wrap, I go back over those initial three wraps and that really strongly bites down on the whole system. That is what will make the difference when your tarp is flapping about in a gale force wind from it coming undone. So now I've got about 30 centimeters left and I've come down the wrap. I then come back up towards the middle once more and pass a loop under the bite there. Position so you can see that. So we've got this loop and it's just going to go up through there. And then when I pull that tight, the loop is carried into the bindings which hold it more firmly. And everything's nice and tucked away nice and neat. It's attached to the top. Now, I can really shake the hell out of that. It doesn't go anywhere. But if I want to, get the coming done in a second. Yep, so I'll quickly now go through those. Nice and quick. I've got four to do. So you can follow me around. So we're going to wrap it around our finger and thumb. Got about an arm's length left. Start to tuck. We tuck it once. Twice. Three times. Back towards my thumb at each instance. Pinch that. Get my finger and thumb out. It might be if you're doing this with gloves that you uh, take your finger and thumb up before you do the wraps, but there's all, all kinds of ways to adapt it as you're working. 
I'm coming back down away from the thumb end and then we've got about 30 centimeters left we took it under a loop just like that and pull that down in the direction the wraps are going in nice and tight and that will give us that solid end and we let go so we'll do the next one again disposable peg you can just snap that off once you're ready that's the uh, slippery guy line hitch that we just pinged and done it's nice and quick release it means on a day like today when it's wet you don't get horrible um, I also tend to just either take my pegs out of the ground or snap them off at ground level so they're not they're trip hazards in the future um, another adaptation if it is really windy you can imagine this tarp might be blowing around um, so what you can do is grab that under your arm like that wrap it around just so that you've got a little bit more of the body on that to tie it on with you might notice I'm a little bit more fluid with this one because I'm right handed and I'm doing it right handed now These knots all also work better with um, with kind of um, plaited fibres. So rather than something that's got a, a cairn mantle construction like paracord or climbing rope accessory cord, where there's inner cords and an outer sort of shroud, um, when they're really wet, that, that outer mantle tends to sh um, snarl up and go saggy and cause all kinds of problems with quick, quick release knots and things. So I tend to use something that's just a static sort of plastic line. That's that one done. Into this one, and we've used one of our pegs that we brought with us there. I'll just retain that. And again, a reason for hanging that bag up at this point is if you have got pegs and things lying around, they all go in the bag. We can start to tie up again. So again, taking the tab into my hand. We're going to wrap that figure of eight around, nice and fast, if Max doesn't stand on my uh, line. <laughs> um, there we go, so we've got about an arm's length left, we then catch it, pass it between our uh, palm and the rope, once, twice, three times, and you see each time I sort of pass it up to my index finger and middle finger to then make that space to bring it down like that. But now I've got the wraps moving up towards my thumb. So at this point, I'll come off and go back down the other way. So now we're working away from my thumb, down to the bottom, nice neat coils, 30 centimeters left or so. We take a wrap over towards the middle and push a loop up through there. And believe it or not, when you get practice, you can do this with gloves on, like I did last week. Uh, on Instagram. Last one. wet day out today hardly anybody in the forest with us no better time to get in the woods in my opinion to get the place yourself usually you get practice at these you can do them in the dark you don't even have to look um, like I say you can sort of make some adaptions to be able to do them with, uh, with gloves on uh, with mittens even as well it's all stuff to play with that's part of the fun of it all right so we've got our four corners tied the way we now just want to get the tarp into the stuff set and this is going to be a good representation for you because it's actually soaking wet now this tarp um, anybody that's used them before will notice they somehow miraculously double in size when they're wet and trying to pack them into that initial packet that you brought them out into the woods in uh, is almost impossible so I tend to pack my tarp away the same way every time regardless of whether it's wet or dry so that I know I've got a packet that will fit in my rucksack uh, and I'm not kind of struggling to adapt something that I've done at home in the dry that I'm then having to sort of modify in the wet. Um, so I just do it the same way. These uh, sort of modern uh, sill nylon tops, 
um, very very waterproof, very light and packable. They tend to get a little bit um, sort of clingy when they're wet, and they're also you know a little bit fragile. So putting them on the ground to sort of roll them and fold them and that sort of thing, if there's sort of sharp sticks and brambles about, uh, if you can avoid that, it's always preferable. Um, you also uh, essentially want to keep it clean as well. So all of our waterproofs, whether that's clothing, uh, Gore-Tex jackets, trousers, tops and things, um, start to function a little less well when they're dirty. So trying to keep it clean. Um, that also benefits if you're collecting water off of it as well. So I try and keep them off the ground as much as I can um, for all those reasons. And as well, you know, if you're in countries where there's biting insects and things on the ground, staying upon your feet is always preferable. So that's the method we're going to use for this now. So we'll start to pack it towards the bag. Uh, we've got Prusik sliders on here. So they just take a little jiggle to loosen. Uh, that keeps the top nice and tight on the line. But it means we can slide it in. So what I do is a little bit of a concertina. Just a little one. Just to keep everything nice and neat while I'm operating. So pinching the top. Slide it in. And then I tend to come sort of about half Nice and neat concertina there. And then you bring in the bag. Now, another thing you might have noticed if you're packing up your waterproof tarp um, is that it's also relatively um, airtight as well. So if you start at the bottom, pack the bottom in, and move up to the top where there's no openings or gaps, you can end up with these big bubbles of trapped air that you've got to force through the fabric. Uh, so what I tend to do initially is start at the top. So grabbing this bit here, We'll make a little fold to get started with. Start to tuck that into the bag, like so. Working towards the end where there's all those open ends of the tarp, all the edges to let all the air out. It just packs up as simple as that. And you could clip that on and potentially leave that there if you were still working in the nice warm weather and you wanted to open up the space a bit. Maybe you've got a bit of a camp set up underneath. There's one way to just quickly have it away. Um, but for packing it away then, I'll leave that there. Tarps in the bag to protect it. We now disengage the knots. So we've got a uh, event hitch on this end and we've got a taut tarp hitch on the other. Depending on the amount of tension you've got in the system, it's often better to undo the taut tarp hitch first because um, the event essentially operates on tension. So by trying to force it through, just takes a little bit more of a wiggle. There we go. The tops on the ground now in the bag. We then do that same thing. So the same butterfly hank with the main guy lines. This is why I, another reason why I prefer a uh, four mil ridge line as opposed to something thicker. Uh, I like a good sturdy ridge line because uh, it gives you a good anchor to pull everything down from. It's a little bit more static, a little bit more firm. Uh, it also means if the occasional light branch falls off off the tree above you, got that bit more protection there as well, um, and it's also got a good amount of utility around camp as well, whether you're canoeing, tying up paddles, lining boats, that sort of thing, um, but it means you can hank it down nice and neat as well. So that was another butterfly hank, and to finish off, we've got the taut tarp hitch, again these knots for setting up the tarp, they're on our previous video on how to set up the tarp. Um, they're also on the website howbushcraft.com in the blog section if you'd rather read of them in a blog. There we go. And pull that to the side. And then start to tighten that up. So again, around the finger and thumb. This one, obviously, it's not quite so important, quite so critical that it's tight because you're going to get this out before it starts flapping about in the wind. Um, so it might be at this case you take it off your hands like I'm about to do because it's a bit bulkier for sending the wraps around it's still the same thing so wrapping it around and around and around and around and then locking it in and then that tucks in there as well the benefit of this system like I say is we've got all the open ends at the top so we can squash the air out really easily put a bit of a knee on it I just roll the top in. I like this system for many reasons. Uh, I've sort of played around with this sort of stuff for years trying to find a system that works really well. I like that one because 
I've got pegs in there, little lightweight pegs, which I use quite often instead of making them every time. Um, so they fit nicely in the bag. Everything's contained in a waterproof pouch, so it's not quite as detrimental to my kit putting this in there. Um, and it's also malleable, so rather than a brick that's locked down tight uh, with the cords and that sort of thing, that you know you might have a really good specific place in your rucksack to put. Um, I tend to prefer something that's a bit more malleable, so as I put this in, it can kind of squash into those little corners and nooks in the rucksack. Um, that means that it sort of all packs together and squashes up quite nicely. So that's how we do it. Well, that's one way how to do it anyway. <laughs> um, so thanks for watching. If you found that useful, um, do let us know. There's comments below. Um, head over to the website if you'd like to book onto a course to do more of this stuff with us. Um, from me and Max at Howell Bushcraft, thanks very much.